Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to continue with my series on Join the Proof of Keys movement. In today's video, I'm going to cover Ethereum. So let's get going. Okay, so we've talked about the Proof of Keys movement for Bitcoin in a previous video. Uh, but uh, if you have Ethereum, you can do the same thing. Uh, take possession of your private keys. So I'm going to go through a, a few methods on how to do that. Uh, the first one will be a desktop-based solution, the uh, Ethereum wallet or the Mist wallet. And then uh, I'll talk about a paper wallet. And then I'll talk about a hardware wallet, the, Nano, the Ledger Nano S, where you can move your Ethereum to a wallet where you control the private keys. So let's get going. All right, so our first wallet solution will be the Mist wallet. So uh, in order to get the Mist wallet, you'll head over to the Ethereum Project homepage. I'll put the link down in the description. Uh, you can just scroll down here. Um, you don't want the 32-bit version. I don't know why that's their default. Kind of weird. Uh, but you can just click See All Versions, uh, Agree, and then you can see the list of... Uh, versions here. Now in my case I'm going to use uh, the, the installer. Uh, it's a standalone installer that will install the uh, Mist wallet. So I'm just going to use this installer here. So we just click the installer and then we can drop it in your uh, downloads or your des desktop, wherever you want to put it. Now that we have this uh, downloaded into uh, our computer we want to run the installer. But there is a special step that we can do first you scroll down here, they have uh, SHA-256 checksums that we can use to check the integrity of the file. I highly recommend it. This is the checksum for the full installer that I just downloaded. I'm just going to copy that into my clipboard. Now there are many ways to run checksums. I happen to have a standalone checksum checker, a piece of software installed on my computer. So all I need to do is browse over to the file that I just downloaded. You can see it right here, Ethereum Wallet Installer. We're just going to open that. And it'll run the mathematical transformation on the installer that you just downloaded and generate a, a series of different SHAs. Now, uh, we're interested in this SHA-256 right here. So if we uh, position our window just underneath their website, we can see that there's a pretty close match. But uh, instead of going line uh, character by character, we can just paste that in and hit verify. Uh, quick and easy verification just to make sure you've got the file downloaded that's not corrupted in transport or altered in transport. And now all we need to do is run the installer. We can say yes here. I'll get some of the clutter out of the way here. And you'll see that it's going to install in your program files. Okay, and then you can see also that it's going to put some files here in the app data folder, which is a hidden folder on your computer in your user folder. There's actually some very important files that are going to be put in there. So I'm going to hit install. All right, and after you do that, it's going to open up this little menu here. Uh, I'm sorry, this uh, file window where you can run the installer. They're going to drop one on your desktop. I, I like to pin those to my taskbar. I'll just hit that. All right, we can get rid of this window and clean this guy up. All right. All right, and this is the window on first launch, what it's going to look like. All right, and you'll see up there that it'll be waiting on blocks, and it might take a while for it to sync. You can see that I've already done my first sync, uh, and so uh, it's synced up to the Ethereum blockchain. So we have a full node wallet here on our desktop to which we control the private keys. Now it's also going to mention that you want to back up your key store file, which is in that special location I was talking about. You'll also notice that I've set up my first account uh, on first launch. Yours should be blank, so all you have to do is hit this add account and create an account by entering a password uh, and then it'll ask you for a confirmation pretty straightforward stuff right 
So uh, what we want to do is back up that key store file. That's where your private keys are held. And they're held locally on your computer. You control those private keys. So you want to make sure you back them up. So you just go over here to File, Backup, Accounts, and it's going to open up that file window. You'll notice it's in your app data folder, which is normally a hidden folder on your computer. And that's the, the folder right there, the key store folder. You want to back that up to a safe location. Now in my case, I happen to have an encrypted flash drive that I like to use. All right, so I'm just going to mount that guy up. As you can see, I've mounted that uh, encrypted flash drive on the A drive. So I'm just going to open that guy up. And on my encrypted flash drive, I can create a new folder called Ethereum. All right, and that's the folder where maybe you might want to create a new folder too and call this one uh, Wallet and give it a, a date just so you know what it is. All right, we'll just open that up and drag that key store folder in there. That's our backup. That's the file that we're going to need if we ever lose this a wallet. If we accidentally uninstall it, if the computer crashes, you'll take that file, put it on a secondary device, and keep that secondary device in a safe location. All right. All right, you can see here the address of the wallet. It's pretty straightforward. We can just copy this into our clipboard, and that's the address that we want to send our Ethereum to. All right. So, uh, I'm assuming that you possess Ethereum, uh, be it on a Coinbase, Bittrex, Binance, wherever it may be. Uh, in today's uh, scenario, I'm going to show you how to transfer it from Coinbase Pro. All right, so we'll just head over here to Coinbase Pro. If you don't have a Coinbase Pro account, it's very simple to set one up. And uh, it'll link to, uh, you can use it standalone or you can use it in conjunction with a normal Coinbase account. Many people use Coinbase to buy and hold cryptocurrency. As you can see, there's some crypto in here at the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do is put it in my Coinbase Pro account because I wish to avoid transfer fees. They won't charge me anything to transfer it from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro, and then they're not going to charge me anything to transfer it over to my wallet either. So it's a little trick that I like to use. So I'm going to deposit that Coinbase in money <laughs> that Coinbase Ethereum into my Coinbase Pro account. So I'm going to head over here to Ether, hit Coinbase Wallet, and I'm going to max it out, and I'm going to hit Deposit. All right, and now that coin that uh, Ethereum is now in my Coinbase Pro account. Okay, so I threw a little bit of that Ethereum onto into my Bittrex account. That'll take a bit to clear, uh, but just as a demo. So we won't worry too much about that. I'm going to withdraw the remaining balance into my own wallet. So what we do is we start with our own wallet on our own computer where we control the private keys, the key store file in this case. I'm going to copy this into my clipboard. Alrighty. And let's go back over here to Coinbase Pro. We're going to do a withdrawal. We're going to withdraw Ether. Uh, and the destination will be that address that I just copied from my own wallet. We're going to max that out. I'm just going to take out what the remaining Ethereum that's in this account. Then I'm going to hit withdrawal. I'm going to need my two-factor authentication there. All right, and so the Ethereum has been withdrawn. Uh, also remember, if you have a Coinbase account and then you open a Coinbase Pro account, you'll still be able to use your two-factor authentication. It'll be the same code that you use in Coinbase whenever Coinbase Pro asks you for your 2FA. All right, and as you can see, our holdings are now zero. Let's go check our wallet. And we've got a 0.21 Ether in our wallet. Uh, and I'll stress again that this is our own wallet where we control the private keys. So uh, that is the uh, goal of this exercise, is to transfer our cryptocurrency to our own wallet where we control the private keys. And with that control comes great responsibility. 
please make sure that you don't forget your password that you set up when you set up the wallet and that you don't forget or lose your key store file that you've backed up. Uh, if you lose either one of those, you're going to have a really difficult time getting access to your wallet. My suggestion would be to use a uh, password manager such as uh, LastPass, 1Password, or KeyPass. Um, they're all good key managers and uh, in today's modern world you really need uh, a, an efficient way to manage all of your passwords. Alright, so let's move on to the paper wallet solution. Uh, the paper wallet solution can be done on uh, a website called My Ether Wallet. All right, and all we really need to do to set up a paper wallet is to uh, create a brand new wallet. And uh, the process there is all you need to do is put in a password. All right, and make sure that you don't forget or lose this password. It's very important. We're going to create that new wallet. Uh, I'm not going to save it. And then there's also a key store file associated with this that you want to download and hang on to. Put that in a special place. All right, so you'll want to back that up to an external device and you'll want to continue here. And then it shows your private key. And now this is the private key that you don't want anyone else to see. Uh, I'm uh, exposing it here because I'll never put anything in this wallet. Uh, I'll leave the uh, transfer to you. Um, so I'll put this in my clipboard. All right, so uh, all we have to do is hit print paper wallet and you get this nice uh, paper wallet that you can print up and hang on to. All right, and then you've got this nice paper wallet. Uh, I used a color printer, so it looks pretty nice. You can cut it to its size, and then you can even laminate it and just put it in a safe place. Now, if you want to transfer money into it, you simply take this public address here. All right, you can copy that into your clipboard and do the same thing I just did. You know, we'll just go over here to uh, Coinbase Pro, make a withdrawal of Ethereum, and then use that as your destination address, just like I did before. And then if you want to check the balance on that, you can take that public address and go over here to etherscan.io, right? And then just paste that address in there and it shows you the address and it shows you the balance alright and so you can use this paper wallet to safely store your ethereum long term and remember uh, paper wallets are a long term solution you don't want to be sending a lot of uh, transactions to paper wallets piecemeal because uh, that reduces your privacy so you might want to do a small test transaction to make sure that uh, the address is working okay and you're receiving uh, Ethereum and then store uh, an amount that you would like to take off and put into long-term storage you know maybe it's uh, five or ten Ethereum whatever the case may be right but we don't want to use that as uh, a working address right it's just a long-term type of storage address all right now the next one that we'll move over to is uh, the hardware wallet in this case we're we're going to use the uh, Ledger Nano S. All right. Now, the Ledger Nano S is a hardware wallet. And when you set up an Ethereum wallet uh, using the Ledger, the private keys will be stored safely on the Ledger, and you control access through these buttons. All right. It's a very safe and secure way to store your cryptocurrency. In this case, we're dealing with Ethereum. So we just launch Ledger Live. First, we'll connect. All right, now if you don't have Ethereum on your Ledger Nano S, you'll just go over here to Manager. All right, it usually asks you uh, to allow access to the manager. So just hit this little check mark. All right, and then you'll just go down here to Ethereum. They're arranged by uh, in order of market cap, so Ethereum will be close to the top. You'll just install Ethereum on your device. Okay, and then once you've done that, you'll set up an account for Ethereum. There it is. All right, and then just hit continue. And you'll set set up an account. 
I have an account already, so don't have to worry about that. All right, now uh, all we need to do to uh, transfer some Ethereum over to this ledger is to uh, open up the Ethereum account, and then we're going to hit receive. And then it's asking me to enter the Ethereum app on the device. So I'll just head over to the Ethereum app. And we hit continue. And it wants me to verify the address. That is the Ethereum address, and you'll notice that it's also scrolling across the device itself. So we'll just confirm that the, the address on the device matches the address on my screen. And then we can copy that into our clipboard. All right. Now, in this case, I'm going to transfer from my Bittrex account. If you remember, I sent a little bit of Ethereum over to my Bittrex account. My assumption here is that you're storing Ethereum on your Bittrex account and you need to get it off. So let's go over to my Bittrex account. Let's go over here to wallets. And as you can see, I have an available balance of Ethereum in my uh, Ethereum wallet on my Bittrex account, right? So, uh, and if that's not showing, uh, when you go over here to wallets, uh, it should be near the top because uh, it has some uh, a balance in it, right? So if you're storing Ethereum on any uh, centralized exchange, the idea is that we want to move it to a wallet where we control the private keys. So I'm going to do withdrawal. All right, the recipient address is in my clipboard. It, uh, the address that was generated by my ledger. How much do I want to withdraw? Well, probably all of it. Just going to click on the amount there and then I can do a withdrawal. Now, if you've got a lot of Ethereum in your uh, Bittrex or Binance account, I would start with a small amount just to make sure that the transfer goes through okay, right? Don't uh, transfer your life savings to an address that you have never transferred to before until you've done a small test transaction just to confirm that everything is working as expected, right? So in this case, it's not very much. I'm just going to go ahead and transfer the balance. And it wants my two-factor authentication. All right. And then it says the withdrawal was submitted. So we're going to go back over to Ledger Live and take a look and see how things go. You can also just uh, check the state of your pending withdrawal over here in Bittrex if you're an impatient person like me but it will most likely get there pretty quickly. Alrighty, and there you go. You can see that the transaction just came in. Uh, my first transaction of 2019 into this wallet. So uh, you can see that the uh, Ethereum has come in and is now safely in this wallet where I control the private keys. So there you have it. Three different ways to uh, store Ethereum in a wallet where you control the private key got the desktop mist wallet, we got the uh, paper wallet that we generated from myetherwallet.com, and then we have uh, the Ledger Nano S, which is a hardware wallet that you can uh, safely store cryptocurrency in. And then I should also mention that uh, the Ledger Nano S is a little more convenient than the paper wallet, uh, so it gives us a, uh, a good balance of security and usability. Um, the Ledger Live can be used for uh, sort of your day-to-day -day usage. So uh, I hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions, please throw them up in the comments, and I'll do my best to get them answered. I'd like to remind everyone that I have a live stream every Friday night, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please join me for the live Q&A from L.A. and throw out any questions that you may have. I'll see what I can do to get them answered on the fly. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.